Hi again. The word stoichiometry comes from Greek. The word stoichen, which stands for element, and metry, which comes from meter, or to measure, which essentially is what we're going to do today by taking careful measurements of the mass of uh, one particular species in a reaction. We can use that information to predict what there will be of other substances or species in a reaction. So let's start by moving this out of the way. And the reaction I want to look at today is combining iron oxide, this material here, Fe2O3, with carbon to produce iron and carbon monoxide. The steps we go through I've highlighted over here in red. I need to begin with balancing my chemical equation. So quickly, there's two irons present here. I'll require two irons here. Three oxygens here, which means I'll need three carbon monoxides to balance it. And I'll need three carbons to now bring them into balance. So step one, I balance my equation. Step two is to convert the given information into moles. Well, I'm given 50 grams of that material. And I want to take that and convert that into moles of iron oxide. To do that, I require one piece of information. What is the molar mass? Because we calculate the number of moles by taking the mass and dividing it by the molar mass. Now you might recall what we need to be, to, to, to be able to do that is have access to our periodic table. Um, very quickly as a means of review, I look up the element iron and I have two of them. So 2 times 55.85. And I also have three oxygens. And look over here, they're 16. I take that and I sum it, and that gives me 159.70 grams per one mole. So that's my molar mass. So taking 50 and dividing it by 159, I arrive at the number of moles n. 0.313 moles. Let's move that back out of the way. So I've essentially completed now the second step. I've converted my given information to moles. Now I'm going to use the equation. And what I mean by that is by using this equation, I see that one of these requires three of these. So now moving from iron oxide over to carbon, I'm going to put here the ratio that must exist between the moles here and the moles here. A 1 to 3 ratio must exist because I need 3 times as many. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 and this tells me now the moles of carbon that I'm going to require 3 times as much. So that's step 3. Use the equation coefficients. And my final step now is to take that information, convert that back into grams, and that requires, again, the molar mass, in this case, of carbon, which is 12 grams per mole. And by rearranging this equation, the mass will be the number of moles times the molar mass, multiplying these two together. And when I do that, I get 11.3 grams. So that's my solution to determining the first part of this question, the mass of carbon required. Now for the mass of iron, um, let's work up here for that. Again, I take the 50 grams, I convert it into moles, so it's going to be the same number, 0.313 moles. Now I'm going all the way over here to the substance iron, and the ratio that exists here is 1 to 2. Hence, I'm going to produce twice as much iron as iron oxide, so 0 0.626. And now I want to convert those moles back into grams. Now all I need is what the molar mass is of iron. And again, from the periodic table, we saw 55.85 grams per mole. To find the mass, 
I multiply these two together just as I did before and that's going to take me to 35 grams. I'm rounding my answer off to two significant digits because my starting information had three significant digits. That's why my final answer should also have three. So that would be the mass of iron I produce. Here the mass of carbon I would require. Now there's a second step that happens in this process and I'll show it to you here. We take our first reaction which produces carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide from this reaction is then used in a second reaction combining with oxygen to produce less harmful carbon dioxide. My question is if I'm starting here, if I'm told that I have 50 grams of this material, what mass will I need of oxygen over in this reaction? A little bit different than the question before because in the previous questions the species that were involved were all in the same reaction. These ones are in different equations. But here's my strategy. Again I start by making sure my equations are balanced. I'm going to take the given information, convert it into moles, which we've already done. So that's 0.313. Now, to make my way over to oxygen, it's going to require two steps. I take a look and I see that carbon monoxide is common to both of my equations. So if I can determine the moles of carbon monoxide produced, I can use that number down in this equation. So here's the first step. I take this. The ratio that exists between these is 1 to 3. So I'm going to produce... 0.939 moles of carbon monoxide. I'm now going to take this number and bring it down here. And now I use the ratio that exists between these two, which is 2 to 1. So that's going to give me half that number, 0.4 five, seven moles. And my last step now is to take this and convert it into the mass of oxygen. To do that requires, again, the mass is our number of moles, 0.457 moles, and multiplying it now by the molar mass of oxygen. Remember it's O2, not just O, 32 grams per mole moles will cancel and I arrive at 15 grams. Three significant digits just to match the three that I have in my givens. So that's it on reacting masses and our next program will take a look at limiting reagents. Thanks for watching.